Hello and welcome to another series of Sin Lab Podcast. My name is Patsy Mukunga and I'll be your host today. In this series, we're going to be delving into a rather compelling and relevant topic, maintaining thyroid health. I say relevant because even I have had to deal with somebody close who had thyroid issues. And, you know, things like this become more relevant to you when it's somebody close to you. And that's why we're here bringing you this topic I encourage you to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Sinla Podcast on YouTube and Spotify. Today, to help us explore this topic, I have two very accomplished individuals with me here who I'd like to introduce to you, my audience. With me here is Professor Olufemi Fasomade and Dr. Baranle O. Okuno. Thank you very much for being here with us today. We're very privilege to have you know your presence i don't take it for granted and neither does in lab but first of all before i begin to ask you our plenty questions i would like to introduce you very well to our audience um professor olufemi fasomadi is a distinguished endocrinologist and a professor with a career spanning over three decades that's a long time <laughs> he earned his mbbs from the university of Ibadan in 1987 and completed his residency at Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Lut in 1994. I think most of our audience may not have been born by then. <laughs> <laughs> After a fellowship in Munich under Professor Ebenhard Standel, he became a consultant endocrinologist at Lagos Island General Hospital. In 2002, he joined the College of Medicine, University of Lagos, that's C-M-U-L, where he became a full professor in 2019. Professor Fasamade leads the Endocrinology, Diabetes and Metabolism Unit at C-M-U-L and Luth. He has held key roles, including Chairman of the Medical Advisory Committee at Luth and Chief Clinical Coordinator at NSIA, Luth Cancer Center a former president of the Endocrine and Metabolism Society of Nigeria, he has authored five books, published 120 peer-reviewed articles, and presented over 300 abstracts internationally. He has also trained over 30 specialists in various medical fields. That is a lot. <laughs> I'm very, very impressed and very, very <laughs> inspired. I hope my career sounds like this one day. <laughs> Dr. Bolanle O. Okuno. She's a fellow of the Medical College of Physicians, Nigeria, a fellow of the West African College of Physicians, and a member of Endocrine and Metabolism Society of Nigeria, and a member and current treasurer of the Association of Clinical Endocrinology of Nigeria. That's a lot of hats. I used to have a teacher in secondary school that would always tell us, I wear a lot of hats. You're wearing a lot of hats. Dr. Okunawa has received several international trainings and certifications as a diabetologist and endocrinologist, including the certification in Leicester Diabetes Center. She has won several awards, including the International Society of Endocrinology Award in recognition of her passion in research. She currently works as consultant diabetologist, endocrinologist at the prestigious Lagos State University Teaching Hospital. That's Lasset, Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. I am currently trying to not be intimidated by the people sitting with me because, wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> well done, Sam. It's, <laughs> it's really amazing to read your biographies. Okay, so let's enter this topic. I'd like to, first of all, ask you, Professor, what is the thyroid gland and why is it crucial for the overall health? The thyroid, first of all, thank you for inviting me. The thyroid gland is one of the endocrine glands. And what does an endocrine gland do? Endocrine glands are in charge of producing hormones and they are different hormones. Hormones for growth, hormones for reproduction, hormones for digestion, hormones affecting the heart, kidneys, and so on. But the thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped organ. It's in the neck. And when it is behaving normally, nobody notices it. You can't even point to it. It's invisible because it's under the skin and under some muscles. Mm. It weighs just about 25 grams for most people. In the ladies, it's a little bit bigger than in the men. 
and uh, in Africans is slightly bigger than in Europeans and in Americans. It produces two major hormones. One of them is called thyroxin, and the second one is called uh, triiodothyronine. The one that is called thyroxin is often referred to as T4, and the one that is called triiodothyronine is usually referred to as T3. So these are the hormones that are majorly produced by the thyroid gland. You will say, what do these hormones do? These hormones tend to set our pace in life because they regulate the rate of metabolism, meaning that oh. a person that has an excess amount of thyroid hormones is going to be jittery, is going to be agitated, the heart is going to race faster, is going to breathe faster, is going to sleep less. Everything will be accelerated. So it accelerates the metabolic rates. So I that's really what happens to like, T4 and T3. <laughs> I think a lot of people relate metabolism for whatever reason to food and the digestive system. So when you're talking about metabolism and you're talking about heart rate, you're talking about, you know, other functions of the body. That's almost new to me. I've yeah. been trained to think about metabolism <laughs> as how my body is digesting food. That's very interesting. So what are some common thyroid disorders? Like how can they affect an individual's health. Yeah, the commonest thyroid disorder is uh, a goiter. And that is when you see that swelling in front of the person's neck. In fact, that's the time people realize that there is an organ called the thyroid gland. Because when you have a goiter, the thyroid gland has more than doubled in size. And you see that swelling on the neck. Some can be so obvious that you could see them from far, far distances away. So that is the commonest thyroid disorder. And it affects probably between somewhere between 200 to 400 million people worldwide. So it is the commonest thyroid disorder. But there are many others that are also uh, present, but are not as common as goiters. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. And I think that's very widespread, more widespread than people would think. Um, but I'm sure a lot of us have heard about goiters. Also. I have seen people with goiters, but... To know the, where it comes from is very interesting. Okay, I'd like to ask you, Ma, like, um, what are the symptoms? How do you know when your thyroid is having issues? Okay, um, let me first say that thanks so much for inviting me to this um, program to share my views. And I'm also very privileged to be with my mentor, Professor Fasoma, who is my teacher. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really a big privilege for me. So now to your question in terms of what do you feel, the symptoms you feel to know whether you have a thyroid disorder? As Prof. Hylia said, thyroid disorder is actually due to either excessive production of the hormone or when it's underproducing. And most times people neglect their thyroid gland. About 80% of my patients that I see in my usual clinic, when they come, They'll be telling me that um, they never knew they had a goiter. About 70 to 80 percent will tell me that somebody pointed it out to them. That's when it, there's already a problem. Yes. They didn't even know. They didn't even know because they didn't even know their, their go the gland is getting enlarged and it's, it's a goiter. Goiter means an enlarged thyroid gland. Mm. So it's the, the when a person has a goiter, it's very visible to which when you're addressing, looking at a mirror, most know. people end up looking at their face and not looking at their neck. So as you're addressing, you should look at your face, look at your neck. It's part of your face in quotes. So, but about 70 to 80 percent of my patients coming for the first time with a thyroid problem in the clinic, they will tell me they are not aware. That so they just they think they are adding weight or what? Yes, their auntie pointed it out. A family member pointed it out. A church member pointed it out. And that's when they now, you know, are now seeking for medical help. So I think attention should be paid to the neck when you are looking at the mirror. Don't look at your face alone. Look at okay, your neck next, also. You know. So now the thyroid gland, when it becomes disease, it starts growing, increasing in size and it becomes obvious. Everybody has a thyroid gland, but it's not obvious because it's just a small size. So when it becomes diseased structurally in mm -hmm. the configuration, it starts going bigger and it starts getting more obvious. So now when the thyroid gland gets bigger, there are some changes that happen in the functioning of the thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. So the thyroid gland usually produces hormones, as Prof. Elias said, 
the thyroxine and triiodothyronine, known as T3. Mm. That's the major hormones produced by the thyroid gland. So when it's diseased and it's going bigger, it can be overproducing that hormone. And sometimes when it's diseased and it's growing bigger, it can be underproducing that hormone. Oh, so underproduction can also make it grow bigger. Yes, but yeah. overproduction is the big commonest cause of increased thyroid gland. But underproduction too can make it grow bigger. So now when it's overproducing the hormone, uh, the person starts having some conventional symptoms like Eat intolerance. The person feels so much heat when everybody is feeling normal. Mm -hmm. The person starts sweating excessively. The person starts getting aware of the heart rate. Normally, as we are seated, our heart is beating, but we are not aware it. it's beating. But when the hormone gets, um, when the production of the hormone is increased, the person starts feeling the heart rate. Any little movement start getting you like want to touch increase. My <laughs> <laughs> that's getting increased bowel movement. Mm -hmm. So most times when the person feeds, before you know it, the person is ready to go to the, the, the restroom, you know, to defecate, mm -hmm. you know. So the person eats a lot and still loses weight. You see the person says, I eat about 10 times a day, eight times, and still the person says, I'm losing weight. Because like Prof has said, the thyroid hormone is very essential for body metabolism. So when the hormone is in excess, the metabolism, body metabolism is very increased. So the breakdown is excessive. Oh. So as person is eating, is pushing out, everything is on the increase. But does it have a reverse effect if it's low? Yes. So, so the, you can gain weight. Yeah. So the 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 um, features of low production is the reverse of the hyper. So you see reduced metabolism. The person gains weight. The person doesn't feel like eating all the time. The person's heart rate is slowed. The skin is dry. Mm -hmm. The hair is dry, you know. And the person gets constipated because the metabolism is extremely reduced with the underproduction. And there are some people that also have this goita, which is the enlarged thyroid gland. And they neither have increased production or reduced production of the hormone but the hormone is still producing normally. The only issue is the gland is on the big side. So in so as a clinician, when they present, there are quite a number of tests we do to further evaluate them, yes. Okay, as, as, as you're talking, I, like I said, I, I know somebody who personally has, um, my brain is doing like this and trying to link, <laughs> like, what have I noticed <laughs> that she's saying in this one? Because I feel like from here, I'm going to go and pick up my phone and go, hello, I'm I learned today that, you know. <laughs> okay, but how often should someone get their thyroid checked? So now, the thyroid function test um, should be checked when you feel you have symptoms suggestive of either hypo or hyperthyroidism or you notice your neck is enlarged. You need to be checked. But there are some conditions that routinely they must run their thyroid function test annually. There are some syndromes to which, like um, Turner syndrome, people with Down syndrome, mm. they must run annual thyroid function test every year. It's, it's mandatory. And there are some other autoimmune conditions that autoimmune means that your body is your body is producing some chemicals against itself. So when there are some people have some autoimmune condition like type one diabetes, mm -hmm. lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, you know celiac disease, pernicious many like that, because the thyroid problem too, uh, quite a number of hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism are mainly due to autoimmune problem. So they can, thyroid problem can coexist with those autoimmune problems. So as a person managing an autoimmune problem, vitiligo, all those things, you should run your annual thyroid, thyroid. function test to know whether now a part of the autoimmune problem, there is a coexisting thyroid problem trying to come up. Okay, yes. so I'm saying that it can be linked with a lot. I really like talking with medical professionals because before today, I've never ever thought of diabetes as an autoimmune disease like my brain is just linking yeah. it like that makes sense mm -hmm. but thank you very much I, i'm learning a lot learning about the thyroid mm -hmm. gland how it functions what to look for and especially when to test and i'm sure that our audience is also learning a lot you know so i would 
you know, advise you to stay. We're going to be back with even more information. And while you're here, remember to like, to share, comment, subscribe to Sinla Podcast on YouTube and Spotify. We'll be right back with more information about how to maintain your thyroid health.